Um, what I wasn't saying, uh, Jackson Hole and the PEP you refer to, um, is that we should move to a single club, a, a single club, to be a single club golfer. A, a single measure was always and everywhere going to give you um, exactly the right answer. That wasn't the message I wanted to convey. The message I did want to convey, however, uh, was that the existing Basel apparatus is broken. It's shot through with complexity, as I tried to point out in that paper. And as a product of that, it is also shot through with inconsistency. And you don't have to take my view for that. That is the view of the investors putting money into banks who have largely lost faith. And here, you're not just referring to Basel II, but even the proposals that are being developed, you're criticizing. So um, Basel III is a very clear improvement over Basel II. Uh, I would say that as I was involved in drawing it up, but it's, it's also the case. It moves to a much simpler measure of bank capital, mm. if you like, the numerator of the capital ratio. And it also introduces a leverage ratio, which we quite like, because it distances all of this from complex modelling and complex risk weights. Those are big pluses for Basel III over Basel II, which should not be lost sight of. This is a real improvement. It also raises the bar, of course. It raises the level of capital that banks need to hold. All of those are big positives. Um, I'll be the last person in the world to say that they weren't big benefits of Basel III over Basel II. But let's be clear. Both Basel II and Basel III are built on the shakiest of foundations. Because on the denominator of that capital ratio is a measure of the assets of the bank weighted by risk. Which they have done the weightings for. Where they have done, and this is the key, this is the key point, Lord Turnbull, which you've, you've alighted on precisely, is that um, the significance in moving from Basel I to Basel II wasn't so much the move from very simple measures to very complex measures. I'll come back to that. That wasn't the key thing. The key thing was that um, the choice over those risk weights moved from the regulator to the firm. The firm was then setting its own standards yeah. through the risk models that it Don't was then. I think it's ironic then that in the world of insurance, which I partially work in, the directive that's on the table but hopefully dying is trying to push us into the box that you are trying to push banks out of and that the, inter the dominance of internal models there will produce exactly the same um, adverse effects as it has done in banking. So, um, I take it you're probably referring to Solvency 2, yes. as it's uh, known and loathed. Um, I think it does uh, risk falling foul of the same uh, critique. In many ways, Solvency 2 may be making even more of a leap of faith than was Basel, than was Basel 2 or Basel 3, um, because um, the risk models that were used for banking were beginning to be developed in-house at the banks. They were being used to manage the risk. Um, I think that, that was much less obviously the case with insurance. So I think many insurance companies are having to invest in risk management models, not to manage the risk, but rather to manage the regulation. Yeah. Uh, I think that's true in banking as well. And, and that, is, that is the ultimate in socially useless activity, yeah. where you're building a model. Come back to banking, or certainly something that's common to both. Is one of the effects of heavy <laughs> reliance on internal models to disenfranchise the, the lay non-executive director? So when the dialogue goes on, basically, it's the experts of the bank talk to the experts of the regulator and regular guys like me just don't get a look in. Mm. So um, I think you've put your finger on the problem. It strikes me as um, 
a thankless task to be entering into a regulatory dialogue uh, on what the precise amount of risk uh, a bank should hold against a very specific asset. Having a negotiation about the capital held against each asset in the balance sheet strikes me as a game of cat and mouse that no one can win. Um, and it's certainly a game that the regulator can't win because there'll always be one step um, off the pace. What we have now, the inconsistencies that the current modeling approach gives rise to, really call seriously into question the credibility of the regulatory ratios that are being published. So let me give you a concrete example. We've looked at the question, let's say you and I are both a bank. We both have an asset. It could be lending to a sovereign, could be lending to another bank, it could be lending to a corporate. Um, we've asked the question, um, how much capital would your model suggest we hold against this identical exposure? And when you ask the banks that question, the quantum of capital across banks can differ by a factor of three or four, or in some cases, even more. I spent weeks, months, years of my life arguing over tiny slithered basis points of capital around an international table. And it turns out, when it comes to the practical reality, the actual amount of capital being held by banks against identical exposures could be half as big or could be twice as big uh, across different banks. As long as that inconsistency exists, I think you know, Basel faces a, a <laughs> fundamental problem. Um, what is the solution? I mean, transparency is part of it, and we can be more transparent. <laughs> but transparency by itself will not reduce, will not rid us of the complication, the complexity. So if you think about simpler fallbacks, it could be, um, it could be ridding ourselves of models and having fewer <laughs> categories of risk asset. It could be imposing, as regulators, flaws on those models. It could be placing greater <laughs> emphasis on measures that don't require complex risk calculations, such as the leverage ratio. So those types of measure are the bridge between uh, where we are and I think where we need to be. But sitting still isn't an option because um, the existing system isn't working for investors, isn't working for banks, and increasingly isn't working for regulators. And if the system isn't working for any of those three, it's not clear it's working at all. Thank you.